What's going on my friends? Dustin with Electrician U. Today we are gonna to talk about the difference between single phase and three phase power. So when we talk about single phase and three phase, what are we actually saying? Let's start out with single phase. Single phase means we literally have a single loop, a single circuit. Uh, I know that when we think of like at a house, um, you know, we've got a house over here. That's a terrible house. We got the service, we got a weather head that comes up here, and we've got conductors that go over and hook up to each one of these. We look at that and we say, well, we have two circuits, right? We have two phases, a black and a red and then a white. So like, how is that one loop? How is that only one circuit? Why do we call it single phase? Because in the utility generation portion of this, um, we only have one circuit. So through this generator, we have a single circuit, copper touching from literally here all the way through the transformer on the primary winding. Um, then we have a secondary, which is completely isolated. It's not touching in any way. So just one big loop of current. And in single phase, what we have is like really out in the field, this is not red. If you ever look at the conductors as you're driving down the highway, there's just two black conductors. It's not a black and a red. So it's really just a single loop that goes all the way out into the field. But during the traveling of the, uh, of the current to the load and the traveling coming back, there's actually a pushing and a pulling motion that's happening at the same time. So you can think of it literally as one just large piece of wire with, um, you know, that starts here and, and ends over there. Well, so it starts here and goes all the way through and ends back here, but it has to go through a load of some sort to kind of slow that current down so we can actually do work over here and make it useful. So while you can think of single phase as a single loop, you need to understand that there's two different things happening at the same time. So current is always going to be traveling in one direction, coming out of that genera generator, but it's coming back the other the direction in equal magnitude at the exact same time. So you can kind of think of this motion, like it's pulling and pushing at the same time through that whole circuit. It's not just like pushing and then pulling. Uh, both are happening at that load. So when we look at something like this, uh, if you look at like single phase generation, at a generator, you're gonna have some kind of like motion of some sort that's gonna move some kind of uh, turbine essentially. Um, that's going to start a spinning motion. So at Hoover Dam, we might have water that's falling on this thing and it's actually turning a turbine. Um, or you might have wind in like a solar farm somewhere that's turning a turbine. That motion is connected to a shaft inside of here and that shaft has magnets on it that can, they all look a little different. This is not how it actually looks. I'm just like, this is the concept, the, the conceptualization of all of it for analogy's sake. But this rod, this, uh, this rotor actually starts to turn. And as it turns, there's magnets on it. And as those magnets turn, they're right next to these conductors. So you, we would know from you know the basics, foundations of electrical theory that when you have a magnet and you bring it next to a conductor, you can actually uh, uh, induce current flow in those conductors. So we're inducing motion in this circuit. And so there's probably a, a pole that's like more on one side and a pole that's more on the other side. And so as it is pushing, it's, as it's spinning, it's pushing current in this way, but the other side of the magnet is also pulling current this way at the exact same time. So it's alternating, uh, you know, 60 times a second. But that's all that's happening, is we literally have just one big loop of wire and we have a magnet next to it spinning that is just nonstop spinning and it's creating this push, pull, push, pull, push, pull, or a push and pull at the same time and then a push and pull that changes polarity. And to better understand that, let's look at a sine wave. So a sine wave is, is not how current travels. People are like, well, does, what does a sine wave even mean? Is there like sine waves going through wires or something? No, it has nothing to do with that. A sine wave is just a graphical visual representation that we can make for something that has 360 degrees of rotation. So anything that rotates, we use a two dimensional graph to display what's happening during 360 degrees of that rotational cycle. So let's say we've got this and this is 360 degrees or zero, you can think of it either way. 
this is 90 degrees, this is 180 degrees, this is 270 degrees. All of you that were in algebra, algebra two, calculus, pre-cal, trig, you should re recognize this, right? So a sine wave, what all it's saying is that at 360 degrees where this thing starts or at zero, as this thing spins, this could be the magnet inside of the generator. So we've got a positive and a, or a north and a south. As this thing is spinning, and it gets up to 90 degrees, it's actually at its maximum that current is flowing through this conductor. And when we get back to the zero crossing, this is zero. Uh, so this is what we call the zero crossing. Once we get back down to the zero crossing, we're back flat again. So the magnets inside of this thing might actually be, or so the conductors inside of this thing might actually be here and here. And right here, there's no conductor, so there's actually no current flow. But once we get one of the poles of that magnet closer to that conductor, it actually increases it to a, mag a, a maximum. And then as we keep rotating, we drop back and there's no conductor, neither either one of this, this, the, the poles. But then it just keeps spinning. But now instead of this current that's leaving here out of this conductor pushing, it's got the south pole of the magnet on it. So now as this goes up, down here is pushing and over here is pulling. And it just keeps doing that over and over. So we have this push that's happening and it drops back to nothing. And then we have a pull that's happening and it drops back to nothing. And we just keep doing that. That rotation is creating positive, negative, push, pull, push, pull, push, pull, push, pull, 60 times a second. They time the spinning of this 60 times per second. That's what we call 60 Hertz. Um, so, that's essentially single phase. That's what a sine wave and all that means. Now, one thing you could do to think about this um, is this is a graphical representation of what's happening over the entire circuit. But to think about how current is flowing, I find it useful to draw the red side of it like this. Because as time goes on throughout this motion, you actually have the north pole side of this magnet and the south pole side of this magnet that are affecting the circuit equally. So as the north pole is pushing current down one side of that current, or one side of that circuit, the south pole is also pulling at the same time. So you can see that both the push and the pull are of equal magnitude and they're equally at nothing when they're not next to a conductor. So that is single phase. Now let's move forward to three phase. So same kind of thing, three phase, we have power generation. Three phase literally just means three circuits, three loops. And these loops are kind of tied together in a certain way where they can all share this, the current that's going through all three of these circuits at the same time. So they're not three completely isolated loops, they're three loops that are connected together in a way that current can flow uh, weirdly through all of them and they can kind of share the load that's happening through three different circuits. So one way to think about this is we've got three generators, three complete loops. So from black here, we've got a loop that goes to red and it goes through and back to this motor. So it's connected in a loop. But at the same time, we also have red to blue so it goes all the way through there. You see we have a completed circuit. But then we also have red to black. So we've got, or I'm sorry, uh, blue to black. So we've got blue, goes all the way over, black over here, back to that. So they're all connected to each other. So current can literally travel through all of these generators, through all of these circuits and out to a load. And it does the same thing at a transformer. Say we have a delta Y transformer. There's an air gap in between the primary and the secondary of this. So they're actually on the secondary side, up on the pole on that transformer, there are conductors that are part of the primary circuit and we call those primary. We usually label that with a P. And then we've got secondary, which are isolated completely by an air gap. So any current flowing in the primary through magnetism allows current to start getting pulled in the secondary as well. When you hold two conductors right next to each other and one of them's got current, the other one has current too, uh, depending on the device and how you do all of that, but that's what induction is. So we have, we have to have circuits, right? So at our house, we're on the secondary circuit. We're not on the primary circuit. The primary circuit's spinning, doing its alternating current thing. Secondary circuit, we'll say down in the building, uh, we've got blue. These aren't in the right order you know, right to left or anything like that in proper phase order. But there we have three phase that we would run to a building, you know, and we've got on the building, we've got a service and we've got a weatherhead, just like we did uh, before, where we will have three phase run into that building.
So this is the secondary circuit. So again, complete loop, complete circuit. From the transformer up here, we can kind of think of the transformer as the source for us, where the source for the primary circuit is the generators and it's going to a load to the transformer. It completely inverses on the secondary side so that we have the transformer that's providing a loop to the loads and we'll have motors and all kinds of things. So the transformer secondary is driving all of the loads in here, whereas on the primary circuit, the loads are generating the current to the uh, primary side of that transformer. So they're kind of inverse of the same thing, but it's just important to note, we're talking about complete loops, right? Complete circuits. Current cannot flow without them. So what's really interesting to note is how all of this works. There's a relationship of 120 degrees that these magnets are set apart uh, in when they're being generated. There's a still rotational motion, but there's three different rotational motions happening. And they're not all spinning together like this. There's like one like this and one like this and one like this, and they're, they're 120 degrees out of phase of each other. So while current is kind of pushing on one really strong, it's gonna be kind of barely pull, like pulling a little bit and pulling a little bit on the other two, and they keep changing as the rotation goes. The other one will start pushing and the other two will start pulling, um, but there's always a relation of like two of them are kind of pushing at the same time one's pulling or two of them are kind of pulling while one other one's pushing. There's never a point where there's not current flowing in the circuits. So if you look at the generator, you know, like we had in our, fingal, our single phase uh, example, we still have rotational motion somehow that's being uh, externally um, introduced into the generation. Um, so like, you know, might have wind or something or, or water or whatever. We still have that same kind of shaft, which is, you know, we can think of this as a shaft or this is like the end of the shaft if you look down at this way. This is not how these actually work. I don't know. I've never seen the inside of one of these big utility generators, but I'm conceptualizing again how this rotational motion works so that you have something visual you can tie your understanding to. So if we think about the this, this uh, shaft that goes through these three generators, kind of like a, uh, a camshaft. Um, a camshaft is gonna allow like a magnetic field on uh, one part of the circuit and then we're gonna have a, another part of it on a different part of the circuit and then we might have another part of it so that as this thing's spinning, none of these are actually pointing the same direction. One of them is pushing current while the other one's kind of pulling it and kind of pulling it and as it spins, it changes the nature of which one's pulling in which direction. So I drew this as kind of an understanding of like, you know, a camshaft essentially, you're gonna look down it and you're gonna have one of these like lobes that is at, uh, at one position and then 120 degrees from that, you're gonna have another one that's kind of at its top dead center or whatever you can think of, it's maximum amplitude. And then you have your third phase. So there's 120 degrees between all of these things. So each one of these is pointing 120 degrees differently. And as it spins, it's pushing or it's pulling, it's doing the same thing as single phase, but the one loop uh, that's connected to this one is just at 120 degrees to the loop connected to this one. They're all still connected. Current has to flow through all of them through the complete system to allow all this to happen, but they're just positioned in a way that they're 120 degrees apart. So we look at a sine wave for this and it's a little bit crazier because we have three different circuits that we're talking about in the same graph rather than one circuit that we're talking about. So when we say 120 degrees out of phase, we're not talking about the actual rotation of the motion when we say 120 degrees. We're saying each one of their 100, 360 degrees of rotational motion that each one of these circuits goes through is at 120 degrees apart from each other. So that you'll see like right here where the maximum point of each one of these, the full current flow, max current, is actually at the point where the two minimum currents meet up for the other two. Same thing over here, you look at the maximum in the negative polarity, that's where you have the minimums where the other two meet up. So there is no point along this line where any of this current, the current actually is like a, an entire bandwidth of current in a three phase environment that's pushing. So you don't ever have this pulsing effect where it's an on and an off like you would uh, over here. Every time these swell and come back, you have a point where there's no efficiency, there's no work being done because it completely stops. But in a three phase, you don't have that. That's why a three phase is used in a lot of commercial buildings and industrial motors and, and machines and things like that because there's no point where there's not current flowing. It's so efficient and so strong and you have three circuits 
holding, doing all the legwork of that work for you. So when we say 120 degrees, just understand that we're talking about each one of the generators, each one of the circuits is 120 degrees out of phase with each other um, in respect to how they're generated. So if we look at rotationally, uh, say we've still got the, the three, Uh, 360 degree diagrams that we're going to look at to try to understand this. We still got zero, we still got 180. I'm not going to do all of these. Still got 90 and 270. So while we might have on this black, you know, it looks, it still says 180 and 360, and you're like, well, wait, shouldn't it say 120? No, again, it has nothing to do with the. Uh, rotation of this thing and where the where that's set up it's still the same thing per circuit each circuit has its own uh, rotation it goes through so when this when this uh, magnet inside of this thing spins it's still at 90 degrees we'll say that you know our conductors are here and here uh, but this one they might be here and here and this one they might be here and here so as this one is spinning we get uh, 90 degrees of current up here and then it goes back down to nothing but the other one, while it is spinning, is going to be decreasing its magnet. Well, it would probably be this one. Uh, this one's coming from its maximum here, but it starts to decrease once we get to that 90 degree mark. And as we keep going, we get to our maximum. The maximum's not at 180. Once this thing spins at 180 degrees, we're still not at our maximum yet. We have to keep going past 180 degrees to get to its maximum because these are 120 degrees apart. So say that we took each one of our phases and we drew a line, right? We got blue phase, and then we say 120 degrees from the top of this down to the top of this, as it were to spin, that's 120 degrees difference. Um, and then we have this one over here. So if we keep spinning this thing, it goes through another 120 degrees. So we've got these three different things that are rotating, and that's what allows each one to kind of have like a push on one and a slight pull and a slight pull on the other ones and then they just keep changing directions. So I don't mean to keep beating that with a dead horse, but a lot of people don't really understand that. They think that there was like one circuit that somehow has like three wires coming off of it or something like that. And it's not, it kind of is how it's all run through the generation. You know, you can think of it being one, you know, giant circuit, but there's no point where like all three of the wires ever touch each other. That's why you're never going to take a multimeter and go to like three conductors. It's only a relationship between two things on a circuit. So it's always a relationship between two conductors that we're talking about. You may still have a three pole breaker where you're running three conductors into a breaker and three conductors out to a breaker. Or you could have what's called single phase in a three phase system where you're only using two of the conductors to make one loop. You don't need all of it going for that specific motor. So each one's a little bit different. Now, speaking of three-phase wiring, something that you might see in a three-phase environment is this guy. Um, LeBron is always sending me really, really cool stuff, so they wanted me to share this with you. This is their brand new mixed-use commercial-grade RFBA box. Um, so it's a floor box, and it's meant to, you know, it, kind of like in, in houses, you're gonna have floor plugs underneath couches and stuff like that, so you can actually walk across the floor and there's receptacles in the floor. Similar kind of thing, a little bit more versatile though, so you have a two gang, a four gang, and a six gang option, and they're actually coming out with a 10 gang option pretty soon uh, this year in 2022. Um, but what's neat about this is A, the versatility, so you can kind of uh, put whatever devices inside of it that you want. It doesn't come with devices. That is something that uh, you have to put your own devices in and configure it how you want. Uh, but the really neat thing is on the inside, how they've engineered uh, the rounded corners on everything in here. So you can actually pull conductors through this and there's not any sharp edges or anything that's gonna nick up your conductors. So it just saves time and it saves you you know, having to pull out all of your mistakes and repull wires because you just nicked up all the conductors. It also comes in a bunch of different variations. So they've got round uh, tops, they've got different colors, they've got different profiles. So there's a lot of different options. So you, it's really versatile, the types of enclosures as well as the types of devices that you can put them in. Uh, they do have different styles for direct burial as well as uh, 
at grade or above grade installations. The reason this has a green coating on it is because it has a special fusion bonded epoxy corrosion resistant paint on it, uh, which makes it able to be put in uh, concrete. But if you were gonna put something at grade or above grade, not actually in the concrete, they have just a standard zinc plated option as well. Um, another cool thing is you see all these different options of knockouts all over it. It already comes with knockout options. Um, some of their stuff has up to a one inch knockout, some of it has two inch knockout, just depending on what model you get. But this is a really, really well engineered, uh, well designed floor box. So if you are looking for a floor box that is really versatile that you can put all kinds of cool stuff in, get this link in the description below. So also not just generators can be uh, three phase, actual loads can be three phase as well. So when you have a three phase load, we'll say that this is a motor, there's actually current coming through um, say we hook up a black to this, we hook up a red conductor to this. This is coming from a breaker at a panel somewhere. We have three uh, places where we're tapping into this motor and because there's current traveling forward and a little bit backwards and a, a little bit backwards on this, there's kind of already this like spinning motion that we're doing to this thing. So it makes this thing spin over and over and over and that's how a three phase motor works. Um, single phase motor is just a little bit different than that. You could still have like blue and red phase, we could say on a three phase, coming from a three phase panel, but you don't need three phases to run this motor. You only need a single phase circuit. You don't need three different circuits. So you would still run just two conductors and we would call that single phasing something. If it's a three phase environment, but you're only using a single phase of it, we would call that single phase as well. Uh, but you could run this whole motor from uh, a circuit this way. The interesting thing with single phase motors though, is a lot of the times they have to have a capacitor because remember what we were saying about this whole like rotational uh, motion, this field, if we've got a conductor here and a conductor here and we're spinning and there's no conductors right here, there's no current. So that magnet can actually get stuck in there and it won't move because there's nothing creating anything to like push it to get it to go. So a motor on its starting circuit, you might have a capacitor and a capacitor is just something that like hooks up and as current goes through the capacitor, it makes the, the, uh, the phase shift a little bit. So it actually shifts voltage and current enough so that it has a buildup of potential and delays the current a little bit, just enough so that it can, it can uh, time itself correctly to spin where the conductor is. And then when there's no conductor, there's a delay that releases the current through that capacitor. Uh, it, it charges and then discharges late so that it still gives it a kick to go around. So that's what a starting capacitor does is it just provides a delayed hit to a single phase motor to allow it to start spinning. Uh, but that's it. That's single phase and three phase probably went way more than I should have. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Best camp music and video.